Hi, this is Bhagwati Prasad from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. So this work is about the hapnia based Ferrari Turner Junction. And this work was done when I was working with Western Digital. And this was in collaboration with, West, uh, with the University of California, Berkeley. So why we are interested, interested for ferroelectric tunnel junction? Because this is a kind of the non-volatile memories. As we all know that currently we have been, the community have been vigorously working on various emerging non-volatile memories to solve the memory wall issue in the current computational architecture. So let me briefly tell you how it works, how ferroelectric memories work. So basically what happened is that when you introduce a thin ferromagnetic uh, ferroelectric insulators between the two metallic electrodes what happens is that depending upon the ferroelectric polarization you may see the two different barrier heights okay so basically you write you apply the uh, uh, voltage to switch this in one state to another state basically you are changing the ferroelectric polarization of this barrier layer and then you apply a small read voltage and then you can see that the there's a large difference between the currents in these two states and that we read the information so people have been, uh, you know, recently people have, uh, like 10 years back, it was experimentally demonstrated. And the FTGA uh, is important because one can switch these devices much faster. And if they are low power consumption devices, they are non-destructive readout, and one can also think of making the high density data storage with that. Okay, so in terms of the off to on ratio, you see they have more than 100 off to on ratio, like this is the junction resistance ratio. And however, the MRAM, the junction resistance ratio, off to on ratio is around four. Okay, so over the last uh, 10 years, people have been working on various systems. The uh, motivation for the people is to, is to how to improve the off to on ratio. They have used various material systems. Typically, they use oxide as electro as a bottom electrode and, and metal as a conventional metal as a top electrode because there's a large screen length difference between the two, these two uh, material systems. And with that, you can get the large, uh, you know, off to on ratio. Okay, so this is the early experiments here. What they have done that the BTO, barium titanate is conventionally uh, non ferroelectric materials there. They have used a two nanometer of these films and then they made the 500 nanometer diameter devices. And here, this is the ferroelectric uh, polarization switching, which is basically demonstrated by the uh, PFM uh, measurements. So this is a phase uh, of the ferroelectric materials where you switch from one state to the other state. And you see that this is the uh, resistance the device. So what you see there, the, the junction, the switching of the junction resistance and matches with the ferroelectric switching of the barrier layer. So this demonstrate that whatever switching they see, this is because of coming the ferroelectric switching in the barrier layer. And they have done the read measurements. So you basically apply certain plus minus three volt, you switch the device in one state or the state, and then one can do many times read. So this is the how the read current look like. This is the on state current, and this is the off state current. So there's a large resistance difference between the off state and on state current. And you can see the data pretty much look the same at low temperature and room temperature. And then they have done the right measurements, so one can write these devices multiple times, and they have, uh, you know, they switch the devices uh, as small as like 10 nanosecond pulse, and then they could demonstrate these things with the 50 nanometer wide nanojunction devices. Okay, so over the years, people have worked on various proposed kite material system, but these material system is a problem, how you can integrate them with the CMOS. However, recently, uh, people have demonstrated ferroticity in hapnium systems, doped hapnium systems, and which has, has better, uh, you know, CMOS integrity, like uh, in, in CMOS integrations, uh, in terms of the growth, silicon integrations, ferroticity, scaling, and 3D integrations. And in fact, uh, you know, the polarization of these ferroelectric materials, these uh, doped hapnia based ferroelectric materials, is close to the proposed kites. So, the problem is that they have a higher cost of field. Okay, so this is if one can solve these problems, the doped hapnia based uh, material system could be interesting for uh, FTJ application. Okay, so this is one of the demonstrations where people have made 3D vertical ferroelectric, uh, you know, FTG, uh, ferroelectric uh, uh, HGO based FTG devices. So here there are two uh, devices, okay, and they uh, one on the top of each other, and then they have seen that uh, the ferroticity, like this uh, ferroelectric polarization behave pretty much same for the both devices, and they have seen the resistive switching as well. Okay, so this is what we have done recently. We have uh, we have uh, deposited one nanometer of the zircon 
nickel on doped hafnium oxide on LSMO substrate. And we have shown the robust ferritin switching, ferrolactic switching in this material system. And so this is the uh, uh, PFM imaging, basically. And then we have done ferrolactic measurements. So this is with the thicker films, like 2.5 millimeter films, also so similar behaviors. And then we have done the uh, ferrolactic loop and fund uh, measurements with the 2.5 nanometers and fer ferrolactic stresses to with the 10 nanometer films and all demonstrate that the film is a ferrolactic in nature. And then this is, then we made the devices, tunnel devices. And so here you see that there's a one nanometer of the GKNO to half oxide with a six nanometer LSMO bottom electrode. And we can switch this back in the two states like on state and off state. And this is then uh, uh, current, like read current. Uh, so this is basically current versus read voltage, I would say. And then we basically fit this data with the, uh, some tunneling model. We can see that there's a difference, large difference between the off state and on state barrier height. So this demonstrate that we can basically make thin uh, edge films and which also shows the ferrolytic behaviors and we can uh, basically make the ferrolytic transjunction with that. And then we also uh, reproduce the, uh, the that this kind of behaviors from various other devices from the same films and from other thicker films as well. Okay, so in terms of the device performance, if we compare with the MRAM versus FTJ, what we can see they say what we, what we can say that the FTJ is pretty much you know matches with the specs of the MRAM. Even sometimes it's better. Only few things that we have to worry. One is that the endurance, so that can be improved if you improve the materials quality. And other is that the resistance area product, which is a little higher, which is a bit higher. So that is where we need to work on. But if you see here, the on to or is, uh, off to on ratio of the junction resistance is more than hundred for. For FTJ, however, it is only three for MRAM, and in terms of the energy wise, we are in, in like three or three orders of magnitude, you know, lower than in the in terms of the energy consumptions. So overall, it looks uh, overall, I would say that the, uh, the FTJ is quite promising. Over the last ten years, people have done similar works, and they have shown that FTJ could be a potential non-volatile resistive memory elements, and they in uh, so uh, in, in that uh, uh, technology in that in that setup, I think doped the systems would be more interesting because it it has a scalability through silicon integrations and and recently we have shown that one can achieve the robust proticity all the way down to one nanometers and we have demonstrated the uh, tunnel uh, you know the, the large uh, tunnel electro resistance effect tr effect basically in these devices the on to off ratio resistance is around junction resistance around 135 and so the resistance, resistance area product in our devices is three or some magnitude smaller than what people have seen so we think that the digger, these reserves will set the stage for further exploration of the hapnium based FTJ for non volatile memory application. So, if you want to know more about this, please read this paper. And with that, thank you very much for your uh, attention and looking forward to the questions from you. Please shoot me the questions on my email. Okay, thank you.